Hello everyone and welcome back to Journey with the Kellers. My name is Amanda Keller and we're back in the Keller kitchen again today. Um, today we're going to be making our second um, set of cupcakes from the Fantastic Filled Cupcakes Cookbook. This one is called the Strawberry Brownie Cupcake. Um, and so basically this is, this is gonna take a while. It's quite a few steps. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're you're getting ready to do these is you want to pull one cup of um, unsalted butter um, out of the refrigerator um, and let it come up to war uh, room temperature. And then you're also going to need one large egg that needs to come up to room temperature too. So you need to do both of those. Um, and as you can see, mine are sitting out over here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, this has four... Uh, no, five um, different things that you have to do to make these because these are um, have a filling, they have a frosting, um, then they have a brownie on the bottom, a cupcake on the top. So it's different steps. So the first thing that you're going to do is make the strawberry puree. You can actually make this a day ahead of time if you want and chill it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it for the cupcakes the next day. Um, other than that, you can make them ahead of time and just cool it off before you um, use it with the cupcakes. So basically what you're going to do is go ahead and take two and a quarter of sliced strawberries and you're going to put them in a food processor and process them until you get a puree. Then you're going to take that puree and you're going to put it in a saucepan on the stove and bring it to a boil. Once you bring it to a boil, you're going to lower the heat and simmer and cook until the puree is reduced by about half and it says it should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and it'll be, be like a heaping half of a cup of puree when you're done. Now this puree is also going to be divided um, for two different things in the recipe. So once you get the puree done, just set it aside to cool off. Or you, if you're going to just making it the night before, just put it in the refrigerator and then it just chill it until it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that. And then I'll be back once our puree is done so we can do the next step. Okay, you guys. So now that we have the uh, puree made right here and it's cooling in a bowl although I say that looks more than a half a cup but that's okay okay so the next thing you're gonna make is the strawberry jam and the reason why I'm making this now even though it's like four steps in is because this needs to cool off too while everything else is going out so for this you're just you're gonna need a saucepan you're gonna need to turn it on of course you're gonna put two cups of sliced um, strawberries in there then you're gonna put let's see uh, granulated sugar and lemon juice. So you're gonna need um, two tablespoons of granulated sugar. So one and two. And then you're gonna need how much lemon juice? Oh, two tablespoons of lemon juice as well. heat that up um, for about 15 minutes um, until the strawberries have softened. So once we get that uh, nice and heated up and softened up, then we'll be right back to do the next steps. All right, you guys. So just in case, if your strawberries start to get a little dried out while you're doing this and getting them softened up, then you might want to go ahead and add just another like teaspoon or so of water into it and turn your heat down. So your next step is going to be after you get your strawberries all softened up is you're going to take a teaspoon of cornstarch and put it in, not in your pan, but in another container that you can stir it up with and two teaspoons of water. One and two. And you're going to stir those up together. And then you're going to add that to the pan and you're going to heat this in the pan for about another two minutes. Um, you just want to make it, let's see, oh, no, 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 no. And you're, you're supposed to do it until it, it thickens, but it says it should take only about two minutes to thicken up. So we'll do that here. going to continue to stir it just to make sure that all gets stirred in there. Okay, 
Okay, then once this thickens, you're gonna take it off the heat and you're gonna let it sit for about five minutes just for the jam to just cool off just a little bit. And then you're gonna put it in a food processor and process it up. Um, let's see. And then after that, you're gonna um, put it in a bowl you're gonna blend it until it's smooth and then you're gonna put it in a bowl and cover it with some plastic wrap and refrigerate until it's thoroughly chilled, which was why we're doing this as one of the first things we do instead of one of the last. Okay, so as soon as I get this thickened up and all processed and in the fridge, then we'll move on to the next step. So we'll be right back. Okay, you guys, so now that we have it all nice and smooth and processed and we put a piece of cleaning wrap on it with it sticking to the top of the thing to try to help keep a film out, we're going to pop this in the fridge to chill it and then I'll be right back for the next step. Now we got that in the refrigerator. Your next step is you're gonna to wanna to take a fourth a cup of unsalted butter and one third cup of either chopped semi-sweet chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate chips. And you're gonna melt them at 30 second intervals in a microwave safe bowl, of course, and um, until it's melted. So melt it for 30 seconds, whisk it together, melt it for another 30 seconds and whisk it together, which I have already done. So after you get that done, um, you're gonna go ahead and add the granulated sugar in the brown sugar. That's not sugar, that's flour, here we go. Okay, so you're gonna need one third of a cup of granulated sugar. Okay. And then two tablespoons of packed brown sugar. stir that all together. Mm -hmm. Very chocolatey. Okay, perfect. Now you're gonna go ahead and add um, one large egg and one egg yolk into this. So we'll do that. And then you're gonna whisk that all together until it's all mixed in. It says it'll take probably about a minute. Probably true. Sometimes eggs are a little bit harder to get whisked in. Or no, I'm sorry, a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Ugh, my dryer and washing machine are squeaking. Okay, and you're gonna put, uh, mix that in. Oops. Okay. So once you've got all that in there, Set that aside, and you're gonna grab another bowl here. Oh, this will work. Okay. And you're gonna need your sifter. All right, and you're gonna add all of your dry ingredients into this and sift them together. So you're gonna need flour, which is uh, one third of a cup. I need to refill my flour thing. It's getting down to the nitty gritty here. One third of a cup of flour. You need one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa. Okay. And then one eighth of a teaspoon of fine sea salt, which I will tell you I do not have an eighth of a teaspoon. So I just do about half of a fourth of a teaspoon. 
And I didn't realize this wasn't open yet. There we go. We'll do about half of that. There we go. All right, and then you're gonna sift that all together. take the dry ingredients here and you're going to add them to the wet ingredients and you're going to whisk them up just until they're whisked together. So once you don't see any more streaks and you just to do this gently. Okay. So we'll just give it a nice slow whisk there. sure there's no more st streaks of the flour or anything left and once you get to that point you are done okay, I don't see any more perfect okay so the next thing you're gonna need a cupcake pan with 12 liners in it um, with 12 cupcake liners in it you're also going to need one of two things you can either get a loaf pan a 9 by 5 loaf pan and you can line it with parchment paper and then spray it with um, spray oil or you can use like a mold. Um, and these are for like a little decoration to go on top of this cake is this, the brownie batter is gonna go in these. So I'm using a little heart-shaped mold because there's a little heart-shaped brownie in the picture on the top. So I got this little heart-shaped mold and I'm gonna make my extra brownies into heart-shaped molds. If you wanna just use a loaf pan and make a little slab of brownie and then either cut your own um, things out or use a cookie cutter, and cut them out or even just do little squares as a decoration on top whatever you want to do okay so let me get the spray on because i am going to need to spray that pan okay all right so we got that nice and oiled and then you're going to need to put the um brownie batter in your cupcake liners um, and, but you only need it to do this about a fourth of the way because the rest of it's going to be filled up with cupcake. Okay, so we're just going to fill these about a fourth of the way full with brownie batter. You know, I love baking, but when there's this much steps to a cupcake, Sometimes this is when I miss the box. Still love to make a box of cupcakes. <laughs> Basically just putting like a teaspoon full in the bottom of each one here. All right, so I will get these filled up and get my mold filled up. And then I will be back to show you how to make the cupcakes and put that on top. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, you guys. So now that we got the brownies all made up and got them in our little cupcake holders here, and I got the little heart-shaped brownies made up as well, we're gonna go ahead and do the strawberry cupcake. Um, so what you're gonna do is first you're gonna take one cup, um, you're gonna, well, you're gonna need a bowl with a sifter in it again. Oh, and you're also going to need to turn your oven on to 350 degrees to preheat, okay? So first you're gonna add one cup of flour to your sifter. And then you're gonna need a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Okay. And a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. a different baking soda. It's huge. I just can't reach the baking soda hardly. There we go. Okay, so a fourth of a teaspoon of that. Okay, and you're gonna go ahead, and, oh and we've got the sea salt. So also a fourth of a teaspoon of the fine sea salt again. Oh, 
likes a fourth of a teaspoon this time. Okay, so then you're gonna go ahead and sift that all together. you're going to set that aside for right now. Okay, so then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take another bowl. Um, oh, I'm going to have to go get my mixer. So hold on just a minute. I'll be back. So now that I got the mixer up here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one third of a cup of butter. And you can either use a stand mixer like I have or and it's on unsalted butter, by the way. Um, you can either use a stand mixer or a hand mixer, whichever one works for you. But go ahead and put that in the bowl, and you're just going to kind of beat this up for about a minute or so. And while that's going ahead and mixing, um, let's see, you need to put it on a medium speed. So let's go ahead and speed that up there. Okay, and while that's mixing, you're going to go ahead and also get a half a cup of granulated sugar. Scrape down the sides real good. Make sure you get the bottom too, because sometimes some things will be at the bottom that didn't get added in. Okay. That all scraped off. All right, so put that back down in there and just give it a good little whisking again. Better. Okay, so once that's all mixed together, then you're going to go ahead and add your uh, fourth of a cup of puree. Um, let's see. Now you're going to mix this for about 30 seconds, it looks like. Yep, okay. So, fourth of a cup. Is it a fourth of a cup? Yes, fourth of a cup of strawberry puree. all done up this the batter may look a little bit curdled which if you don't know what curdled means it means it kind of looks a little bit like cottage cheese and it does a little bit this looks like a yeah, pink stuff with lumps of stuff in it okay so let's give that a good scrape down again all this stuff on the thing okay and turn it back on for a few minutes, or a few seconds, I should say. All right, and once that has gone and your puree and all that is all mixed in and everything is looking good, 
That's when you're going to add your dry ingredients. We're going to do this with a rubber spatula. So we can go ahead and take it off of here. in with the rubber spatula until there's you know it's well mixed in there well incorporated as they say I mean a very lovely pink make sure you scrape all the sides and get the bottom make sure you get all that mixed in Um, strawberry. It's got little tiny flecks of strawberries in it. It's great. Okay, a little bit more up here on the side. Okay, now we've got that done. So now, once you do this, you're going to divide, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to divide this up between your cupcakes. Um, and you're going to make sure that your cupcakes are third or put it on top of the brownie that you already put in there, the brownie batter. And then you're going to fill the cupcake with this on it to about three quarters of the way full. Um, and then we'll be back when we go to put them in the oven. So we'll be right back. All right, you guys, so we have these all ready for the oven. So you're gonna go ahead and put these in a 350 degree oven for about 18 minutes. Um, you do wanna start checking them at 15 minutes, probably every minute after that to see if they're done up until the 18 minute mark. Um, and basically it says to check them by pressing down on them. If it springs back, then it's, it's done. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven. Now for the other part, for the, um, either the loaf pan of brownie or the mold of brownie, if you're doing a loaf pan of the brownie, um, by itself, you can go ahead and put that in at the same time as this. Um, it says times will vary depending on what you did, but it should take about 18 minutes as well. If you did the molds, um, or something like that, they usually take about nine minutes. So you'll just kind of have to check them and see when they're ready. So I'm going to go ahead and put these both in. Once we get them cooled off, then we'll go ahead and make the buttercream icing for them, and then we'll put them together and see how they come out. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, you guys, so we have our nice little cupcakes done. Aren't they cute? And then we, I also have my little um, heart-shaped brownies done, although I will say this one came out pretty good, but some of the other ones I went to go get them out of the pan didn't come out very good. Um, I always say I don't really like to use spray oil for stuff like this and this is why I, I can never seem to get it so it doesn't make this stuff stick anyways so I should have just used shortening but that's okay so this next step is going to be making the buttercream for the top of the cupcakes um, and so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that cup of butter that you had set it out at the beginning to and get to get it to room temperature and you're going to beat it for four minutes either with a hand mixer or with the stand mixer um, and then once you have done that, you're gonna go ahead and turn it on low, and you're gonna add um, a fourth of a cup of the puree, of the uh, strawberry puree that you made at the, this, this was the first thing that we made. So we're gonna get a fourth of a cup of this. Beautiful. Okay. You're gonna add that in there. You're gonna let that go on low. Um, let's see, what does it say? Uh, for about 30 seconds. And then once that 30 seconds is up, you're gonna turn off the mixer, and then we're gonna have to sift some powdered sugar. Make sure this is dried off, because I had to use water to clean it off. I know, I know you're not supposed to, but it's it. nice and dry here. Otherwise we're going to have a nice uh, sticky thing in there. Okay, let's 
scrape this down one time before we do it and make sure that it gets in there. It seems like it's just kind of sticking to the side of the bowl instead of adding into the butter here. Okay, there we go. Now, you're not gonna pull this out of here because you actually are still gonna use the mixer, but you do need to um, shut it off while you sift the powdered sugar in. Make sure I get this all cleaned off again. Okay, there we go. All right, and so you're gonna need three cups of powdered sugar. off of the mixer for a minute. So three cups of that. And then you're gonna put this back down and you're gonna turn it on to low, I think. Let me make sure. Yeah, so you're gonna do it at low until it's all incorporated. And then you're gonna turn it up to high and beat it for about one minute once it's all incorporated in there. So as soon as that's done, we'll be right back. Okay, so after you're getting that all beaten for a minute, then you're gonna go ahead and add a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla to it and just make sure that it gets all mixed in there. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one more good scrape down just to make sure. And then after you get your vanilla mixed in, if it seems like it's a little bit too stiff for like decorating, um, then you can add um, a teaspoon of water at a time. Just mix it, make sure you mix it in each time um, until you get the consistency that you want. Or if it seems too liquidy, then you can, or you can add in, um, let's see, how much did it say? It just says add a little bit more sifted powdered sugar until you get the consistency again that you want. So this doesn't seem too bad, but I am just in case gonna add a little bit of water just because the last time I did it, and then I couldn't get it to work in a piping bag because it was too thick. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water here. Let that get all nice and mixed in. Oh yeah, that's better. There we go, that's where I want it. Okay. Now let's make sure she's in good shape. Okay, I think that's good. Beautiful. All right, and so as you can see from this 
um, thing, the petal thing here, you get this really nice pink frosting and it is ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna pull this off the stand and there we go. All right, so the next part is going to be filling our cupcakes and then putting the um, frosting on top. So I'll be back in just a minute and we'll show you how to do all that. All right, you guys. So this is your next steps basically on how to assemble the cupcake. So you're basically going to take a small spoon and you're just going to kind of cut the center of the cupcake out as best you can. Okay. Down in there. So you just got a nice little hole in the cupcake. Here. And now you're going to take the jelly that you made and of course remove the film from it and see it's a nice kind of a thick, doesn't wiggle too much or anything, nice little thick consistency of jelly and you're just going to put that in there, okay? Right up on there. Just like so. Beautiful. Okay, now I've already filled my bag. Um, and this is the kind where it comes with this tip where you just cut it, easy, convenient. Okay, so got it a good consistency. So you're just gonna start in the middle and circle your way out and then circle your way up like so. And then if you did the hearts or whatever little shapes you did in the brownies, you're gonna stick that in there. And look at that. Isn't that adorable? I love it. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's give it a taste and see how it tastes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take off the cupcake wrapper. See how the, ooh, look at how the brownie came out at the bottom. It looks really good. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am in heaven. Oh, that is delicious. Mm. And my brownie is still just a little bit warm on the bottom, which I didn't realize, which seems to make it even better. This might be one of the best cupcakes I've ever had. I've had a lot of cupcakes in my lifetime. Okay, you guys. So I found a fantastically strawberry filled cupcake, brownie cupcake, basically. And I hope you guys all like this video. If you did like and subscribe and you can see more, um, if not, that's okay too. Just watch whatever you want. You guys have a good day and I hope you enjoy cooking as much as I do. See you later. Bye.